In this video, we're going to talk about using layers in Unity. What layers are is a way that you can group similar objects in your game that you want to change how you interact with everything on that layer. In this video, I'm just using a little demo scene from Cinti Studio's Western Pack. If it's something that you like and you want to check out, you can find the link to it on the asset store below. You can see your layers by selecting any object and looking in the inspector, we have a layer drop down here. And by default, everything is going to be set to default. If we click on this drop down menu, you're going to see all of the default layers built into Unity. So we have a transparent effects layer, ignore raycast, water, and user interface. So these are the defaults and then we can create our own. Ignore raycast is a pretty special layer that you may want to use sometimes where anything on this layer is going to ignore any raycast in your game. So if you're not familiar with what raycasts are, you can check my previous video and we covered raycasts there. So let's create a new layer. Let's click add layer. And now you're going to see the list of all the default built in layers and then all the layers that we can create. So you can have a total of 32 layers from zero to 31 and they can be anything you want. So I'm going to create a layer for my train and then I'm going to create another layer. I'm going to call this barrels. This is going to be obstacles that are placed on the tracks. Now, if we go back and select the train, if we click on the layer dropdown, you're going to see we have the option to select train now. And then it's just asking if I want to change all the children to be on that layer. And yes, I do. Okay. And now I'm going to drag in this barrels prefab that I made. And this one's on default, so I'm going to set this to the barrels layer. And now before we work on anything in the game itself, just to show some benefits of using layers, in the scene view here, if you go up to the top to this layers dropdown, you can show which layers you can actually show or hide. So if I want, I can now select the train layer, click this little eye, and this is going to hide that layer. So anything on that layer in our game is going to be hidden in the scene view. But if you go to the game view, notice it's still showing up fine in the camera. So this is just something to help when you're creating and editing your game. If you have a lot of objects that are in the way, you can just hide that layer. So it makes it easier to work on. So let's turn that back on. And now the opposite, if we want to hide it in the game view, we can go and select our camera. And now on the camera here under rendering, we have a culling mask. And this is what's called a layer mask. I'll be creating a separate video covering layer mask shortly after this one. So this is a drop down, and you notice there's checks on some of these objects. So we can remove or add checks on all the different layers and tell it which ones we want to show. So right now we do have everything selected. Let's remove our train layer and notice we still see the train in the game, but in the camera it's gone. So if I go to the game view, now our train is gone. So this lets you control what you actually see in the game. And this could be useful for things like invisible objects, or if you want to make invisible barriers, um, you could make objects that one player can see, but another player can't. Or if you want to make it so you have to get a power up and unless you have that power up, you can't see objects. You could do something like that where you change this layer culling mask and this controls what we actually see. So if we add it back, now we get the train. Okay, so now we have our barrels on the barrel layer and our train on the train layer. So if I run the game on those barrels, I just have a simple script that's going to cause them to destroy themselves and make a little explosion when the train hits them. So let's run the game and see how this looks. Okay, so the train hit the barrel, they exploded, everything works as intended. Now what if we wanted the train to not hit these barrels? but we didn't want to change anything on them. So if we want other objects to still hit the barrels, but the train to drive right through them, we can go up to the edit menu and then project settings. And if we click on physics here, down at the bottom, we have the layer matrix for the physics. And this is where it's going to show all of our different layers and how they collide with each other. So anything on, if we look on this side, this is the default layer. And then each of these checkbox shows which layer it, it collides with. So in this case here, if we go down to our train layer, which is right here, and if we don't want it to collide with the barrels, which is this one, we can uncheck that. So now if I run the game, 
Our train is no longer going to cause a collision when it hits the barrels. See, it just passes right through them. But the barrels themselves are still a physical object that other objects will collide with. It's only the train layer. So if I take this train, let's select our train, and let's take it off of the train layer and put it onto default. And if I run the game again now, you're going to see our train collided with them and pushed the model away. The reason they didn't explode is because in the code, I'm checking for only collisions with the train layer to cause them to explode. But since the train is no longer on the train layer, they don't explode, but the physics engine pushes them out of the way. So let's put our train back onto the train layer. Okay, so now that's the basics of how layers work. And you saw a layer mask on the camera, but let's go into our code and see how we can actually do this with code. So what I'm gonna do is open my barrel script, and this is just a simple collision script I made. We can take an object and do game object dot layer equals, and then you can type in layer mask dot name to layer and type in the name of the layer. So the way this is gonna work here is on a collision, it's gonna check if the object we collided with, if their layer is equal to a layer with the name of train. And this can be any string that you typed in on your, your layers. Now there is also the opposite that we can do here. So if we do a debug.log, say if we collide with something and we just wanna see what the name of the layer is. So on the game object, you can do dot layer, and that's gonna give you a layer. But when we go back to our game here, let's select our train. Let's go to add layers. Now, when we do game object dot layer, it's gonna give us the number of the layer. So it doesn't care about the name. It's actually just looking at the number. So to demonstrate that here, I'm gonna do debug.log collision.gameObject.layer. Now let's run the game and look at the console here. So you see when it collided, it gives us a zero. Remember this script is on the barrels object. So the barrels are always colliding with the tracks, which are on layer zero, the default layer. Let's go back to our project settings. Let's check train and barrels again. So now we get collisions again. But if we're debugging that out to find out what objects are hitting each other, that's not really that helpful when it just gives you a number. So what we can do is very similar to up here, how I did layer mask dot name to layer. We can do the opposite here, which is layer mask dot layer to name. And then we pass in the number of the layer, which is game object dot layer. And this time it should debug out the name of the layer. Okay, so there it debugged out train. So we can actually see the name of the layer. Okay, so that's the basics of using layers in Unity. Keep an eye out in the future. I'm going to have a video covering layer mass as well as how bit masking works. Thanks for watching and I'll see you then.